Hey guys, it's Nick from Both Days Fishing. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to install a through-hole transducer in a kayak in a way that's easy, cheap, and very effective. So stay tuned. Now I'm gonna use my unit as an example of how to set this up. I run a Garmin Striker 4 fish finder on my kayak. Um, it's a really great fish finder that's really budget conscious. You can usually pick this up for about $99 and sometimes even less when it's on sale. Um, if you want a more in-depth review on the Gar Garmin Striker 4 fish finder, I've done a video on that, as well as how I power this fish finder in my kayak. So make sure to go down and check those links out. I'll leave them down in the description below. The through hole method of transducer installation is my favorite by far because it's really, it's a set it and forget it strategy. Once you have the transducer and the power cables in place, installed and ran, it really gets all the cables off of the deck and allows you to just to bring your fish finder head unit and the battery source to the kayak when you want to go fishing and there's really no more hassle about that. With the through hole method, I've had really great down scan capabilities. The only caveat to the through hole method is sometimes the temperature reading is going to be a little bit off, but after about an hour or two on the water, usually the hole gets to about the same temperature as the water and that can get mitigated. So after a couple different fish finders and a couple different methods of transducer installation in the kayak, I think the best strategy to go about doing this is using duct seal for the transducer installation. I've used marine goop and other marine sealants before and they've always gave up on me after a couple seasons. I'm pretty hard on my kayak because I have to store it outside at the moment and I car top it. Whereas the duck seal has actually done a great job. It's now been on my kayak for over three years and I've had no issues about it. So I'm going to show you how I installed my transducer and hopefully it can help you out. So the first step in installing the through hole transducer in the kayak is picking the proper location on the kayak to install it at. It's important to pick the right transducer location on the kayak to ensure that's going to be a success. It's necessary to pick a spot that's always going to be submerged for a proper reading under the water. Also, try to avoid an area that shares space with other things that you're going to want to be putting in and out of the kayak so you're not going to hit the transducer to dislodge it or potentially damage it. Now I'm going to use a portion of this mystery tackle box as an example of the hole in our scenario. But please keep in mind that most holes are bent or have a kind of a V-shape running through the middle of them. The second step of the installation process is making a well for the transducer to fit through. We're gonna use JB Weld's water weld to form this well. Make sure when you do this step, you trace out the size of the transducer and give a little bit more room than the size so that the, the duct seal can squeeze around and fit snug all the way around the transducer. Once you make the well with the water weld, you need to wait one hour or until it hardens. So in this case, we just sketched out the silhouette of our transducer, which ours came off a Garmin Striker 4 transducer. After we do our silhouette, we're going to use the JB Weld's water weld, and we're gonna take it out of the package, knead it up to combine the two parts, and then we're gonna put a well that's about a centimeter outside of the silhouette that we drew to make sure that when the duct seal goes into this well, it'll have enough room to go outside and on the sides of the transducer to ensure that the transducer is fully covered and that there's gonna be no gaps or air. Remember, in this installation process, air bubbles and anything that's underneath or between the transducer and the hull of the kayak will be a problem. So that's our number one goal. Okay, so now that we've created our well using the JB Weld water weld and we allowed enough time for it to harden, we're going to now use our duct seal. I'm using duct seal from Rector Seal. I got this off of Amazon.com for about $6. And what we're going to do is we're going to break a piece of the duct seal off and then fill the well with it before we push the transducer into the duct seal. Remember, the most important thing is making sure there's gonna be no air under or to the side of the transducer. So that's our number one goal. So I'm gonna knead the duct seal to approximately the same shape as the 
well that we've created to make sure that it's going to fit very snug. And then what we do is we take the transducer and we're going to push it into the duct seal until it's covered all the way on both sides. You're gonna to need to probably apply some force. Obviously don't put too much pressure on the transducer, but enough to where it's gonna get down in there. And then once you think it's seated properly, you're gonna then just knead the duct seal around the transducer to make sure it is gonna be completely concealed. Now at this point, you could just, you know, go and your fish finder would work instantly. However, I wanted something that would be a little bit more permanent. And so um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to just kind of secure it down into my kayak a little bit more. Um, remember, I still want the portability and I really don't want to put any kind of um, adhesion onto the transducer itself. So I'm gonna, I used a multiple of two different types of tape. Um, the Gorilla tape, which is super, super strong, I thought would be too strong to put directly onto the transducer. So what I did is I took some masking tape and I put the masking tape onto the transducer first and then I put the Gorilla tape on top of the masking tape so that the Gorilla tape would be on the inside of the kayak and it would have a really strong uh, bond to the kayak. However, the transducer would be fine because it would be supported and backed by this masking tape so that if I wanted to ever take it out, um, you know, the Gorilla tape wouldn't ruin anything. So I'll show you how I did that. Okay, so now we have the Gorilla Glue tape and the masking tape on the fish finder. Um, this is gonna give it a really good, strong push down into the duct steel to make sure that you know it never gets dislodged if you you know slam it or drop it on accident. Um, or in my case, you know I car top it, so there's chances of it you know falling from a few feet or what have you. Um, but the fish finder is completely protected. If you ever wanted to take it off, you would just bring it up. And then the masking tape's really gonna control whatever happens to the fish finder. So I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, like I said, please put them down in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to you on that. So in my opinion, there are a bunch of benefits of using duct seal over something like a marine sealant in installing a transducer in a kayak. Number one being it's inexpensive and very easy to use. There's not many problems about you know bubbles or anything forming in the solution underneath the transducer, and it's just a really simple installation as you saw in this video. Number two being that there is no cure time with the duct seal itself. With any kind of marine sealant like marine goop, you're looking at like a 24 to 48 hour cure time before you can use it with the duct seal. You can just, you know, put it in. Once it's, once it's installed, you're good to go and ready to fish. Number three, is that you're not putting any kind of adhesion on the transducer housing itself. When you use a marine goop or a sealant, it actually is going to bind directly to the plastic housing on the transducer, and essentially, it's not gonna allow you to ever take it off or ever allow you to redo that process again. So if you mess up or if you want more portability with your transducer, you're not gonna get it with a marine sealant where you are gonna get it with the duct seal. Okay, so that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. I hope it was informational. I hope you can take something from it. If you have any other questions that I didn't cover in the video, please drop a comment down below. If you're new to the channel and like what you saw today, please consider giving me a subscribe. I do a lot of different types of fishing 
and really looking to grow the channel. If you're interested in any of the products that I used in today's video, I'm gonna link all of them down in the description so you can take a look at them yourself. I really appreciate you all for watching, and until next time, tight lines.